This is Duke University. The business of intelligence is about possibility. It's very different from law enforcement, which is a deductive process, right? It's an evidentiary chain. Intelligence is more like a jigsaw puzzle where you know that you only have a quarter of the pieces and the box is long gone so you have no picture whatsoever. And in an hour, the nation depends on you to tell you, for you to say what it is. And you're either comfortable in that world or you're not. And you have to be able to look at the observables, draw conclusions from the observables, not from your personal bias. My degree at Duke was zoology. My focus was really on biomechanics and functional morphology, how living systems are designed. Um, what's great about zoology and why I would choose that over anything else, because it's the mystery of life stuff. Um, if you know me well, you also know that it has this incredible possibility for my theory could be just as valid as somebody else's theory, because in living systems, we kind of think we know, but not certainly. And I don't think, while I love the engineering aspects, I loved the possibility inherent in science. So how do I say that that's the perfect degree uh, for an intelligence officer? I actually used this in, to get my first job here. Um, I applied, I was hired to work on analyzing foreign biological warfare programs. By the time I got here, it was the 1980s, we were cutting our population, that job was gone, and I was wandering the halls looking for a job because I had my shiny clearance and I wanted to work here. And I landed in this group called the Current Intelligence Group that did um, analysis of foreign weapon systems. And I'm going to somehow convince them that me with my shiny zoology degree could actually do this job. And what I told them was mechanical engineering was really applied zoology. That all, if you want to know about perfect systems, they're found in living systems. Frictionless joints, a baby's knee. Eye beams, a ridge, rib cage. I don't know if the guy thought I was too scary to be let back out the streets or brilliant, but he did it. When I had my first child, they wanted me to turn in my badge because um, women never come back from having children. And of course, in an act of civil disobedience for which I've become known, I refused to turn in my badge because they were silly about that. Um, I can think probably upon reflection about how few women leaders there were at the time I was coming up, but you know what? I had great leaders and mentors throughout the way, so now we have such a diversity of women mixed in with the diversity of all the officers here that I think you can kind of be who you are and be more confident that you're going to find a role model for the way you think about things, the way you process information than you probably could back in my day. Now, nearly two decades of change later, we brought together two generations of agency women. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. And because you did that, we don't have to fight that battle no. quite as much as you did mm. because you did it. I really believe in servant leadership. Um, it's something that our director believes in is that we are not owners of any of this, but we're stewards of this. And this goes for the men and women that work for me too. My job isn't to use them up in the accomplishment of the job of the day. My job is also to make sure that I'm helping them become the person that I got to become over the course of my career. To do something for more than my gain for society's benefit is just something I love. I, I am. I'm fundamentally a public servant. I'm Sue Monroe Gordon, class of 1980, and I am forever Duke.